in the town of Mazoe, against a beautiful backdrop of clear skies and towering mountains, children are getting ready to go to school. Uniforms are on and breakfast is ready. There's the familiar cacophony of children eating, getting their coats, looking for backpacks, and a mother doing last minute face inspections before the kids rush out the door. It's a typical day in a family home, but this isn't an ordinary home. It's a morning in the Grace Mugabe Children's Home. I decided that one day I got willing, uh, I want to put up a children's home so that I can, you know, uh, give these children a proper uh, upbringing. Of course, the objectives of for uh, in actually setting up a children's home is to actually look after children. Uh, you know, uh, first and foremost, and also to ensure that uh, the kids are actually given the proper education they require, and also to give them a, a, a you know a good upbringing, so that when one day they uh, become adults, they go into society, they are well equipped to be on their own. With full-time carers, most of whom are widows divorcees and single women from the local community. The children grow knowing that they have a loving mother. This is a model like no other. Amai Grace Mugabe, once a little girl herself, came from very humble beginnings. She remembers how her and her siblings had to be aided by an uncle to cross a flooded river to get back home from school on many occasions. Later, Amai would experience a disruptive and unfulfilling first year of high school. I was born in South Africa because my father used to work there. Uh, but I don't know really what pushed him to bring us back when I was five years old. For some reason now when I am in this uh, position as the first lady, I think back and I said, uh, if my father was alive, I would have patted him on his back and said, you did a good job by bringing me back to your roots and showing me the place that you grew up in and also to have that experience of the rural life. And I think in a way, God wanted it that way. I didn't know God had plans for me to become the first lady. So I think God wanted me to have that experience, to understand how people live in the rural areas. And I appreciate having had the opportunity to have that wonderful experience with the people out there. Eventually, she goes back to school at Krista Mambo Girls High until her O-levels. Amai Grace Mugabe remembers all too well the ills of meager schooling. That is why she has dedicated her life to giving only the best to her ever-growing number of children from her home and the schools she has designed and built. I actually want uh, to, I'm um, initiating, initiating a different uh, approach to boarding. Something different from what we were exposed to or what we were offered in those days. I want it to be, because we must move with the times. I have traveled, I'm a well-traveled person. I've seen schools. But I've seen schools and I've, I've said, I want to challenge them. I want to even do better than what I have seen on my travels. And what I'm building here, I'm putting up structures that are beautiful for children. When you look at the primary school, the junior school, the secondary school will be exactly the same as that. The hostels will be the same. I actually wanted uh, hostels that are like hotel style, and I don't want the children to be congested and I don't want this dormitories type accommodation because I f feel that the children should have privacy as well. So the primary uh, children will be about eight in a room but it's very nicely designed. There will be cubicles, so four in each cubicle because we're going to put bunk beds. 
and for the secondary, the upper uh, uh, classes, they're going to be probably four in a cubicle. We are not going to do bunk beds because these will be, you know, older boys and girls. And we feel that they should have even more privacy. Most of the children at the home will not remember the often appalling and heart-wrenching circumstances that brought them there. Instead, they will have a normal and loving upbringing that will prepare them to participate fully in society instead of on its margins. That is why Amai brings them in so young. We had 15 of them initially who came and uh, they were all wrapped up in blankets. Uh, none of them could walk. But uh, today the number is grown. I have uh, 88 children. I also started taking children from those who, whose parents, whose mothers are in incarceration. Mm. And I feel as a mother that I would not want to see children you know, uh, serving sentences. I feel that when they are in prison, they are actually serving sentences that they did not, for the crimes they did not commit. And so I offered to look after those children. I talked to the prison's uh, authorities and I said, I am prepared to take them on here, bring them up, and when their parents are released from jail, they can come and take them. So only six parents agreed to bring their children here. The six came here, but fortunately the four mothers, four of the mothers of the six were released and they came to take their children, but uh, it was a very sad day for the children themselves and everybody else who had committed themselves to looking after the children. They were so much used to the love they were getting here, the care they received. You know, the fact that they are in a place, they are free, they, you know, they are amongst people who love them. They left crying, but they had to go because they, the parents are there. Uh, we still have two, uh, the parents are still in prison, but they're doing very well. They, they are growing up well here. Get up very early in the morning. Four o'clock we are up. Do our exercises. Pray. After that, we bath. Thereafter, we start making our beds. Our own beds. Then we clean our children, wash our children, bath them, feed these children going to school first, and those going to ECD. Lastly, we bath the infants when it is warm. So prayer is one of the aspects of our lives in this place. We value prayer and the children also are being taught to pray. And you know, because of the nature of what we do here, looking after an abandoned child, looking after a damned child. You know, we believe in those spirits that actually attack families. And I don't think those mothers who dumb babies, who abandon babies would really want to do that. But there are some spirits, evil spirits behind that. And because of that, we say we don't want those evil spirits to follow the children here and hinder their progress in life. The Grace Mugabe Foundation encompasses the Grace Mugabe Children's Home, Amai Mugabe Junior School and Amai Mugabe High School. All three are nestled in a tranquil and serene valley, creating a safe and close-knit environment for the children and the caregivers. Amai's touch is evident in the precise attention she has given to the design of the buildings, the finishing touches and the cleanliness of the homes and the schools. 
Amai Mugabe's artistic eye clearly comes through in the clothes the children wear at the home, for sporting activities and in their school uniforms. If you look around, you can see it's a place that God appropriately chose for Amai. The mountains that you can all see are mountains that seem to speak about the faith, the unshakable faith that Amai has, our mother has, the first lady. The school heads, teachers and administration staff are all handpicked by Amai and a team of experts. The school itself has attracted both foreign students and teachers, from its growing library and well-equipped computer lab to spacious sports grounds. It's an ideal learning institution. Our school has two departments. We have the early childhood development department, uh, generally referred to as the infants department. Uh, the ECD department uh, comprises of the reception classes, ECD A and ECD B, and grade one and grade two. Uh, this department is headed by a teacher in charge. We also have the junior department, which is headed by the deputy head. Uh, it comprises of grade three to grade seven classes. And normally when the grade seven class uh, finishes, they proceed to high school. Our curriculum is quite wide. It's a variety. Uh, actually, right now we have um, SIMSEC, but we're looking forward to having Cambridge in the very near future. And uh, we're actually providing subjects like uh, English, Shona, History, Geography, we also have some arts. We have art and technology, design and technology. We also have uh, all those other subjects that you can have in other schools. We are offering them here. As part of her vision and planning, her children from the home are educated at the school and will continue to do so right up to higher education all with the intention of preparing them for a brighter future. Amai Grace Mugabe is a true believer in the power of education, an enthusiastic student herself who was recently awarded a doctorate. Learning has been a fundamental cornerstone of her character, clearly passionate about the welfare of children and empowering other women. Amai Mugabe endeavors to live by example. I registered to do a degree in Chinese and you know also it was a way of motivating my children that uh, I did not have the opportunity to do that but I have the capacity to do it. It was very difficult, that language is very very difficult. And then after graduating I said okay uh, I've done the degree and then I went on to register to do my MPhil at the university here. I did it. So my topic was uh, this changing social structure and functions of the family, the images of children's homes. So I did this also to encourage. I'm encouraging other Zimbabwean women that uh, if you didn't have the opportunity, if you still have the capacity, you have the background, you can achieve it. You can still go back to school and get, you know, the education. Growing up under the loving eyes of understanding parents and a supportive family left an indelible impression on a young Amai Mugabe. She would later strive to bring up her children in a similar manner, to be humble, hardworking, loving and never to take anything for granted. I, 
manage to ensure that to tell the children that, uh, look, father is busy. But also, I try to bring them up in the very normal way and also teach them to uh, realize or come to the realization that uh, we are in the status because of one man, the president. So that should not go to their heads, that they are president's children. And you can see the way my children behave. They are down to earth. It's because of what I instill in them in terms of behavior. It was also early on that Amai began flexing her entrepreneurial muscles. As a young girl, she was able to identify business opportunities. As fate would have it, that instinctual foray into entrepreneurship would mature into a full-blown business acumen in the form of Kushungo Holdings. A key pillar in the Grace Mugabe Foundation, the farm was specifically created not only to feed the nation, but also to generate income to sustain itself. Although donations are welcome, Amai decided that the foundation needed to be self-sustaining in order for its grand vision to be successfully realized. This is 50 hectares of the section under Iron Mask section. This wheat is planted to complement income for our uh, Iron Mask project which houses the children's home. At the same time, we are expecting not less than five tons who sell this wheat to GMB so that we realize income at the same time feed the nation. We have about uh, more than 2,300 dairy cows here, which uh, we are keeping and we are milking. We have uh, the state of the art uh, milking parlor in Southern Africa, where we can uh, milk about 64 cows in less than 10 minutes. We have already a capacity of about 60,000 days uh, after every six weeks, right? Uh, and in this house, uh, we have about 13,000 beds, which are almost ready for slaughter. Our acreage here for commercial maize is 256. So I've been, we have covered 272. We also do potato for our children. We also do some vegetables like carrots, cucumbers, and etc. Amai is the driving force behind all this. Uh, she's a quality person. She's a smart person. Uh, if, I, if I say smart, I mean upstairs, smart. We know what she wants, and we try to, 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 to achieve that. And uh, you can see even the quality of the carrot here. We, we try by all means to try and, and match her standards. The new parlor was set up by the first lady right from scratch uh, and all the equipment uh, inside there, uh, she's the one who uh, facilitated uh, uh, for it to be put there. You'll be surprised that she's very uh, uh, particular about uh, certain things. You can see the hygiene, the nature of the equipment, the type of equipment. She was involved right from the sourcing, uh, identification, uh, up to the uh, uh, installation. When I do everything that I do here, especially anything that's related to land reform, mm -hmm. because it's the president who, who spearheaded this program. I say to the president, we must also get farms, work the farms, develop the farms, improve mm -hmm. them so that we, we become exemplary to others, that this is the way to go. And when we actually embarked on this land reform program, we are serious about it, we mean business. Anyone who knows Amai Mugabe knows about her fierce drive and determination. A self-confessed workaholic, once she sets her mind to doing something, she must do it and do it well but she also describes herself as a quiet person who prefers the work she does to speak for itself. 
which is quite ironic considering that she is the First Lady of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Best described by her long-lost high school friend, Mrs. Doreen Badze, she talks about how am I and her recently reconnected after almost 20 years. She was just a quiet, on the quiet side, reserved, very collected, and um, minding her own school business. 20 years later, fast forward, uh, I came back and uh, I met uh, her sister-in-law at a birthday party. And I mentioned to her sister-in-law that, you know, I never got a chance to meet her again, but um, go tell her that I'm back and that uh, it would be nice to meet. Uh, it was on a Saturday and the next two, the following week on a Tuesday, I got an invitation to meet her at uh, the children's home in Mazowe. So I was excited to see her. I mean, the first lady that you went to school with. <laughs> there was a lot that we needed to talk about. Uh, so I um, went to Mazowe and uh, believe it or not, she did not have anything else scheduled. Mm -hmm. We spent the day sitting just like we are now, of course on more comfortable chairs, <laughs> <laughs> doing nothing but talking about, you know, the past. I had friends, but unfortunately some of the friends of the people I went to school with, we are not in touch and some of course have passed on. But uh, there is one lady I met, uh, we, we, she came here. Uh, she was in America and we said okay let's just uh, you know uh, relive the past talk about the things we used to do at school and I meet them here and there you know but not not as many as I would have wanted to meet. Channeling her talents into helping others comes naturally to Amai Grace Mugabe. Her loving and supportive family shaped her greatly especially her mother whose beautiful nature is what she models herself on even till this day. Perhaps this is why Amai is the patron of various organizations such as Tennis Zimbabwe, Musha Mukadzi and the Daniko Secondary School. It's all part of her quest to help those in need as much as possible. That's my mom. I, I am, she's my role model and I live with my mom. I always tell my mom that, uh, mom, you are pretty every day. <laughs> you know, I've always told people that uh, it's not about the way you look, but all the beauty is in a beauty we talk about. You are beautiful within, inside. Mm. And what is inside shows in the face. Mm. And this is what I say to my mom because she was a kind woman and this is the beauty I talk about when I say somebody is beautiful. It's not the way you appear in my eyes, but what you do for people, the way you look at others, the way you feel for others, what you think about others. That's what is beauty of, you know, a human being. Yeah, we have uh, uh, students with disabilities, students who are able-bodied, boys and girls, young adults. <laughs> So we have a secondary school and, and uh, a vocational training institute um, where the young adults are. Um, and we are fortunate that um, since uh, 1997, Amai, uh, Dr. Grace Mugabe, has been our patron. Uh, of the project, the Nanako project, um, and and also of the Nanako annual Paralympic Games. During the difficult years, 2007, 2008, uh, sponsors were difficult to find. Uh, so am I almost single-handedly made it possible to hold the games and. Uh, and of course, there's some 
some sponsors assisted uh, in kind. Uh. No one reached that level. So I managed to send myself to school. I was studying with ICM UK. I passed with distinctions. After that, Mama called me, the first lady, and then she said, I see you like studying. I want to send you to university. So that's how I got a scholarship to go to Thailand, where I was studying a bachelor's degree in hospitality and tourism management. I would like to say thank you, Mama, for the tremendous support towards my degree. I'm tongue-tied. If it were not too old, you have been uh, far, far beyond my reach. I'm so humbled. Thank you so much for the love, for the care, for the guidance. She has really impacted a lot in my life because uh, at the time when my father passed away, it was about eight years after my mother had passed away. So none of my siblings were working yet. Uh, my eldest sibling was in varsity and uh, my brother, whom I was funding, was also in varsity. Uh, my other brother um, was looking for a job. And my sister and I were still in high school. So we were sort of like doomed because we didn't, we didn't have anyone to turn to because there would be no one to pay my fees. I didn't have anyone else to look up to. I've known her as a mother and treated her as a mother the same way she has treated me as her daughter. She never gave me any second-hand um, love or care. She, she took care of everything. She paid my tuition and she even bought me my first laptop. I love you very much, Mama. And I really, really appreciate all that you have done for me. And sometimes when I think about it, I just want to cry because <laughs> she's, you're awesome. <laughs> Amaya Mugabe is no stranger to the juggling act between wife and mother that every working woman in the 21st century has to balance. Add to that being the mother of the nation. Thankfully, she has a strong sense of faith that keeps her centered. Is the recognition on my part that I'm a creation of the Almighty. And when I'm here on earth, I have to live by His word. And I believe that everything that I do Everything that I'm able to accomplish, it is because God has allowed me to accomplish whatever I'm able to achieve in my life. We have problems. And as the mother of this nation, as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, I need to pray for everything. I need to pray for Zimbabwe. I need to pray for everybody in Zimbabwe. I would want to pray for my husband. I would want to pray for the job you gave him to do for Zimbabwe. I would want to pray for myself. I want to pray for wisdom to come our way, to come to our children. So I, I really immerse myself in prayer so much. This prayer for women has realized her purpose and works to fulfill it every day. On this day that marks her birthday, we have come to celebrate all that she has accomplished. We have come to share in her vision for a brighter Zimbabwe and we embrace her desire to do it together, hand in hand. We know that we are not all academically inclined. Some children will not do well academically. So we, we intend to do a schools training center in future funds per meeting. And then we also intend to do a hospital. I have said there are hospitals in here, but they're all old and dilapidated. We need a new hospital, but funds per meeting, in future we will also do a hospital. And then we intend to do other facilities that go with, the, with an, an establishment of this nature to complement the work we are doing here. So we will do a multi-purpose hall, we also want to do an interdenominational chapel here. And in future, funds per meeting and resources must be available for that. We intend to do a Robert Mugabe uh, University here. From all of us, we wish you happy birthday, Amai. We wish you many, many birthdays and that the Lord will keep you 
as you have a heart for the children that you are caring for and also a heart for the people. I pray that the Lord will continue to give you more wisdom and I pray for good health and uh, blessing upon your life as you uh, do the work uh, of the children and the nation. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday from Happy Baba birthday. and my Guti. God bless you. Happy birthday, Amai. God will continue blessing you and giving you more years on earth. Happy birthday, Mama. We love you, Mama.